Uh, okay, so I'll introduce uh, Professor Bai while he's setting up. So uh, our second talk will be given by Professor uh, Ray Bin Bai, um, who is currently a, a professor at the University of uh, Nottingham, uh, Ningbo, China. He's a senior member of IEEE, uh, currently serving as a board member for uh, EJR and the associate editor for Networks. He was awarded the Zhejiang Provincial Outstanding Young Scientist Fund in the 2016. His research areas include computational intelligence, reinforcement learning, combinatorial optimization, transportation optimization, and digital twins. So uh, without further ado, uh, Professor Bai, the stage is yours. OK, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. It's my uh, great pleasure to have opportunity to uh, come here to report, to share our research uh, in a, uh, optimization, combinatorial optimization, uh, um, particularly using machine learning. So um, uh, I'm, I uh, start from the uh, School of Computer Science in Nottingham, Ningbo, China, and joined uh, Wang Chi University, China, in the UK. Uh, so my topic today is machine learning assisted hyperheuristics for online combinatorial optimization. Uh, so uh, these are the contents of the um, presentation I have today. So firstly, I'm going to give a brief introduction just uh, for the benefits of the people who are not necessarily working in the area of the combinatorial optimization and hyperheuristics. And they, I'm going to describe the problem that we tested uh, and that, that tried to address, uh, which is a practical problem uh, in a container port. And they, uh, uh, I will briefly introduce two data-driven methods and uh, that we use to solve this problem. Okay, so um, the combinatorial optimization problems is looking to find the optimal assignment, sequencing, or grouping, or scheduling of the discrete events uh, under the different constraints or conditions. So here there's two keywords. One, uh, the, the scheduling for, for the objects that we are dealing with are discrete events and also uh, the uh, optimization has constraints. So this is uh, in direct contrast with problems where you have uh, continuous solution space uh, often may uh, not have constraints. Okay? So uh, as previous speakers uh, said, there's a lot of challenges in this uh, domain. So um, uh, for example, uh, the problems often in very large scale and the problems are uh, Often also on key hard, that means that the uh, size of the search space grows exponentially uh, with regard to the size of the problem. And of course, sometimes you have a uh, very complex constraints, and uh, the uh, sometimes you have nonlinear objectives as well. Sometimes multi-objective linear. And primarily uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus on. Uh, the uncertainties, I think, like the previous speakers, uh, this proved to be a bottleneck for uh, people who are working in operational deep uh, research domain and make it difficult for existing methods to be directly applied and used in practice. Right? So generally, in the operations research community, uh, community people would, uh, uh, look at, model the problem based on the structure, uh, mathematically, and they try to exploit that structure either in terms of objectives and uh, in the constraints, and they come up with a solution method that would be able to achieve high quality solution. Uh, however, very often these models are not very flexible. Uh, if a single change in your, uh, in your constraint may result in uh, complete change of the uh, solution methods, and often also the computational time is very consuming. Uh, so, so data-driven uh, methods based on the deep uh, neural network now becomes a, a very trendy research, uh, um, and uh, uh, there are some recent papers who's uh, able, who are able to achieve state-of-the-art uh, results for. Uh, some of the uh, these uh, combinatorial optimization problems, right? Uh, of course, um, uh, you know the the general uh, 
downside uh, or drawbacks, as the uh, previous speakers uh, uh, point out, the uh, the these methods usually have uh, problems in terms of the reusability uh, models, uh, generalization problems, data efficiency, as well as the problem in terms of interpretability. Okay, so we are. Uh, here have a group uh, called uh, uh, com uh, computer uh, AIOP artificial intelligence and optimization. Uh, we look at the ways how to hybridize the methods from uh, operations research community and also the uh, uh, the uh, machine learning community to uh, jointly come up with methods to uh, address challenging real life problems like uh, the one we have. Today. So. Um, um, so we are primarily looking at ways to train our problem offline, uh, train algorithm offline, and they uh, uh, often, we don't directly look for solution. Instead, we are looking for a optimization policy that they can be executed continuously uh, uh, based on the states uh, of the problem scenario. OK, so this is in direct contrast with uh, uh, the offline uh, problem solving, where you are uh, looking to find a perfect solution that optimizes your uh, problem, uh, which often is a deterministic version of the problem. They try to execute this uh, solution, uh, but often because of the assertities, uh, the, the problem needs to be resolved many times and lead you to a fewer solution or sometimes a solution with very poor quality. So, so uh, our methods primarily focus on the machine learning assisted online uh, problem solving. OK, so we uh, my research interest primarily focus on two types of uh, vehicle routing uh, problems or, or, or network design problems uh, where uh, the uh, objective is to minimize the overall uh, efficiency or the, the cost uh, cost of the network, delivery network at the same time satisfies various uh, constraints. Uh, and they, uh, if you look at the mathematical model, so for each type of the problem, uh, there are already quite um, significant amount of studies and the different types of the problems of when you have uh, different uh, mathematical formulations and each of them they have their stresses and weaknesses right for example the second model here often uh, the uh, the one that used if someone want to solve this to extremely high quality and uh, uh, using the integer uh, programming methods uh, in the OR community um, so I'm going to skip these details about the uh, model. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the mathematical model or one of the mathematical model for the service network design uh, where you can deliver goods uh, from any nodes uh, where in the VRP, traditional VRP, uh, the delivery or the flow of the commodity is uh, single directional. Uh, so again, uh, you know, there's different, different constraints. There's uh, uh, some of them easier to solve, some of them more difficult. Um, so, how do we exploit? How do we exploit the structure of these kind of problems? At the same time, acknowledging that the lots of parameters in these mathematical models will subject to uncertainties. For example, uh, here we have demand from different nodes. Right? Uh, and also, the transportation time may be uh, different as well. So, so. Um, although these structures are nice, but maybe uh, they are not sufficient. So traditionally, people, if the problem is treated as a deterministic uh, um, optimization problem, they, there's a whole range of the, uh, the optimization methods, uh, um, mostly using different versions of the heuristics to try to allow you to um, balanced exploitation and exploration better. And therefore, uh, although the entire solution space is uh, very big, but we only need to search a subset of the search space uh, with the, the given time and they, uh, uh, to allow us to uh, approximate the solution uh, to the 
uh, find a solution that is close to the optimal solution. Uh, so in, in the OR community, there's a, a different um, uh, approach. Uh, so it's often called the column generation. Uh, uh, in this method, uh, uh, the pro, uh, the method, in this method, we are trying to build a smaller model called the reduced problem, and then based on the uh, the doer version uh, uh, of the problem, uh, we are able to compute some something called the um, the the Shandle price, and based on that, uh, uh, the uh, a, a sub problem called the pricey problem is built and then is solved that allow you to identify new columns that are more promising, a better uh, that to be uh, inserted into the initial uh, reduced uh, problem. And then gradually, uh, once that reduced uh, cost becomes zero or positive, that means we've solved the problem to optimal. Uh, so, uh, in this talk, I'm going to uh, talk about something slightly different from these tr two traditional ways of the problem solving. So in basic, uh, uh, the, the term called the hyperheuristics originally started from Nottingham, uh, UK. Uh, so, so it's uh, about a search method or learning mechanisms to uh, for selecting or generating the heuristics to solve the problem at hand. Right, so, so here the idea is that you have different problems, and then we have an uh, uh, algorithm pool, uh, and then on top of the algorithm pool, we have a uh, what we call hyperheuristic, which is a high-level strategy to uh, pick the right algorithm uh, to solve the right problem, or the uh, right algorithm, uh, low-level heuristics to address that particular problem scenario. So. What we have here is different from the previous methods that uh, the search is directly based on the solution space. We uh, create a heuristic search space that's, uh, that is able to operate all the solution space indirectly. Uh, there is a domain barrier between these two search spaces so that um, uh, a certain level of the general generality can be uh, achieved. Uh, therefore, we hope that the algorithm is more uh, general and uh, uh, better uh, robust uh, across multiple problems or multiple scenarios, not just one problem scenario. OK, so um, these are the sort of like uh, four different types of the uh, uh, hyper heuristics, depending uh, whether uh, the, it is used to select a heuristic or whether it's used to generate a new uh, heuristic that uh, not see before. Uh, so uh, we're going to focus on these two highlight ones uh, in which you see that uh, the bottom level heuristics, these are the, uh, the constructive uh, low level heuristics. They are uh, used to build a solution from scratch. Uh, rather that you have initial solution and then the solution get perturbated iteratively over time and then to find the better solution. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm going to talk about the problem uh, that I'm going to, um, that we are working on. Uh, so um, uh, because Ningbo uh, port is the largest uh, contain, uh, largest port in the world in terms of tur uh, turnover, uh, but a third largest port in terms of uh, the container uh, out, uh, turnover. So uh, we've uh, uh, be collaborative with them, try to look at the ways how uh, use AI optimization to improve the efficiencies. Right. So uh, if you consider this as a simple uh, warehouse, uh, they uh, you have the big equipment here. It's called craze, ship craze. Uh, they operate uh, along a ship uh, um, burst line, and they uh, there is space here uh, divided into different blocks called yard blocks. Each yard block often has one or two uh, yard craze uh, that will also allow an uh, operator to lift and uh, drop the uh, containers uh, from trucks to container yard and vice versa, right? Then you have this little, uh, well, 
here the, the big trunks uh, carrying containers between the uh, the seaside and uh, the the operation the yacht side. <clears throat> right. So um, because of the the operation is uh, uh, in uh, done twenty four hours, right? Uh, uh, so uh, it's basically the machines are busy all the time. They they uh, they are getting extremely busy in uh, over the Christmas period or maybe just before New Year. So uh, operation planning has to be has to deal with that continuous operation, right? Not like a, a flight airport scheduling. All the operations will be cleared up in the midnight and they uh, start all over again from next morning. So here we are considering about like considering continuous operation and therefore it leads to a very um, complex scenario that there is a lot of the problems, but uh, they are interconnected with each other. So therefore, it makes it very difficult to break these problems into sub problems. Right, so um, um, therefore, uh, uh, I think um, we need to find the right strategy to solve these problems. Um, uh, so in our team, we uh, created a a simulation or, or, or the uh, using the, uh, the state of the art uh, simulator. So put data, business uh, model, and some of the mathematical model and algorithm together in one system. And I hope to, uh, uh, well, we turn, you know, we call it a digital twin for the port system. Uh, the outcome of this system is a, uh, a algorithm uh, uh, library that can be used to solve multiple scenarios, right? So uh, I'm going to skip this because of time. Uh, this is uh, so like the simulation we do, uh, we built. Uh, uh, so these simulations are uh, basically generated based on the real life data. And anytime the the data in from the, the port system will be, uh, will allow us to run the simulation uh, any time. So this is the bird view of a container terminal. Uh, uh, we're going to look at one problem of the uh, container, po uh, the truck dispatch. Uh, we build, uh, we model this problem dynamically because uh, there's a lot of synthesis. Uh, the external truck or the outer truck uh, arrival uh, is, un you know, un is uh, unknown, basically it's dynamically arrived and they, uh, you do not know what kind of uh, container operations you would need to service these outer trucks. And this, at the same time, because of the business um, process they have, the travel time is not guaranteed, operation time, service time at each point is not uh, guaranteed either. So we have this very difficult problem where you have about a hundred uh, point of operations, they are highly correlated. One delay will cause massive delay propagated to other points. The size of the problem is very big. Every day they are processing twenty thousand containers, and uh, um, and they, there's a queues, so therefore it's uh, non-linear. So we're aiming to minimize the uh, improve the efficiency and minimize the uh, the the truck. Uh, the ship crate waiting time and the truck waiting time. Uh, so so uh, uh, at the same time satisfy all the constraints. So this is a sort of like the, uh, the mathematical model. I'm going to skip this, um, but primarily you see that uh, each handle, each task will evolve multiple events here. And uh, uh, the, uh, the crate operation time uh, and she, uh, yeah, the crate at ship side and uh, yacht side are sub subject to uncertainties, and we assume them to be revealed in an online fashion. Okay, so uh, firstly, we use the genetic programming. Uh, essentially, it's a, it's a, a tree-based decision process uh, uh, based on the crossover mutation, and, and there's a lot of advantages about this problem because it's usually uh, a very robust and uh, achieve the balance between complexity, reliability, and efficiency. However, we need a good environment to, to train uh, our policy. So um, 
uh, this is uh, one of the, the, the traditional GP you can see that uh, when you have like multi-scenario functions uh, with uh, steps here, they uh, does not do very well often. And also you see the algorithm basically stopped converging uh, over a certain number of iterations. So we need to find a better ways uh, to do this. So our solution is to create a two layer structure in a uh, genetic uh, um, programming tree uh, we have a scenario layer and then we have calculation layer. And in the scenario, scenario layer, we allow us to classify the problem uh, into different scenarios. Both top layer, the bottom layer, they are uh, evolved simultaneously uh, over the evolution. So this is a dynamic process because of time we're going to skip this. Uh, so in end, we can see that compared to the uh, experience-based rule dispatching, we are able to achieve quite a significant e efficiency. And uh, we basically monitor a number of state features uh, uh, currently available uh, in the port. And then based on that, we use these rules to dispatch them. Uh, so second approach we use uh, is, uh, so we use the deep reinforcement learning. So again, and compared to a, a, a normal Deep reinforcement learning, the bottom level uh, actions are not uh, uh, the, the often the actions, the actual decision making actions, exactly the heuristics uh, that we designed pre, uh, previously. So, so uh, there's a benefits here uh, that we are able to uh, exploit. Um, we can um, predefine these heuristics. And also we can exploit some model divide, derived uh, solution states together. We hope to achieve better performance at the same time. It gives us a better readability because each of these heuristics are, are well understood. So you can see that we, um, by using multiple heuristics, we are able to uh, see which one is more popular, which one is less so, but more importantly, we got to understand in which scenario that we uh, use uh, which uh, heuristic. So uh, we did some analysis about the uh, spectrum, uh, spectrogram of the states over the different actions. We also analyzed the, uh, how to set the equipment ratios to achieve the best performance. Uh, okay, I think because of the time, uh, I think I probably have a finished time, uh, so I'll skip this slide um, uh, and I move to the conclusion. So um, I think uh, there's many, uh, many uh, combinatorial optimization um, uh, problem have very nice structure, so it is in our uh, belief that we should hybridize or try to exploit these structures, but in the meanwhile, recognize that uh, there's a um, uncertainties uh, uh, in uh, these models that we need to handle. So it is beneficial to use machine learning to assist the model driven methods for solving these combinatorial optimization problems uh, to balance the performance of the robustness and we believe that uh, the hyper heuristic is a good structure or framework to improve the reusability of the existing method and also provides a better interpretability. And that's it. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, Professor Bai. I see that Professor Waiton has a, a, a question. Person. Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor Bai. Very interesting talk. So from the example, you talk about the container uh, management problem at the port. So I saw that uh, you use uh, like a genetic programming as a heuristic, while you also mentioned uh, you use uh, like a mathematical programming approach. Later, you also mentioned reinforcement learning, a deeper reinforcement learning. So. Mm -hmm. There are quite some uh, heuristic or method to deal with operations research problems, like optimization problems. In your view, uh, what would be the good combination? Like, for example, why do you use a genetic programming? There's others like uh, simulated annealing or other approaches. Uh, how would you decide a particular heuristic approach or how to combine them? Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so. Um, we be trying different ways to to combine them. Uh, so uh, usually in our methods, um, 
So we uh, the benefits of the genetic programming is that uh, you see um, it gives you the solution methods. Well, for the simulate nearly often uh, you assume that uh, there's a there's a deterministic version of the problem and they build a solution based on that particular uh, deterministic model. So uh, so the outcome from the simulate nearly or maybe a taboo search or variable neighborhood search is the the solution, the actual solution to be uh, that have been optimized for that particular problem. What we provide here is not the solution itself. It's actually provide a decision tree like of the solution methods. And then okay. we can use this method to solve the problem based on the actual uh, realization of the certainties. So, okay. so that's uh, that's the, the one. Of course, the uh, we the training is based on the simulation and <coughs> we have to build in the constraints and the mathematical models in that uh, in our combination. In our recent research, we have not managed to get this paper published. So we are exploring the um, using the, the dualism in the integer program. So every integer program, every linear program uh, model has its dual model. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, there's a shadow price try to exploit the, uh, the cost of the different constraints. Uh, so we actually use this concept and combine that with the machine learning. Uh, we managed to come up with a result that does better than a standard and uh, deep reinforcement learning. You can see that. Uh, uh, so the gap from the optimal uh, is a lot lower, particularly when we have non-stationary distribution. We are able to achieve significant improvement compared to the standard deep reinforcement learning. Of course, I mean, there's a, you know, we did try the, 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 the most recent deep reinforcement learning uh, with all the new techniques, but uh, I think uh, uh, this is uh, a direction that we would be uh, exploring in the near future. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, so uh, thanks, Professor Bai. So I guess in the interest of time, maybe you can take further questions. Uh, of, oh, I think there is one more question if somebody just raised uh, So, So maybe we take the last question. Then. OK. So it's a uh, Kunhe, you, you can unmute yourself and. Uh, hello? Yes, hello. Uh, looks like he raised his hand, but. Uh... Okay, maybe we can. Yeah, yeah, I, I cannot unmute Sorry, him. So I... Okay, so maybe we'll take further questions offline. And thanks a lot, Professor Bai. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.